you already know we are major hip hop heads. You know what we have contributed to the culture, and I know you guys love hip hop as well, especially you, Lynn. Lynn, this question is for you. I was told that in this film, you quoted Biggie, uh, DMX, Mob D, Jay Z, even. I wonder if you had to pick a hip hop iconic figure to portray and base a play on or a film on, who would it be and why? Oh, that's such a good question. I mean, honestly, hip Hamilton exists as a love letter to hip hop and as a love letter to musical theater. There are as many musical theater references as there are hip hop references. Um, and um, wow, if I had to pick a hip hop, I mean, the problem is, I've been beaten to the punch by so many of them, right? Like, there's already a Biggie movie, there's already a Tupac movie. Um, mm -hmm. you but know, your I, of it, it's all about what you would put on it. If you had it, it's your dream, who would it be? Honestly, it would probably be like one of the early ones. It would be like KRS or Rakim. Like, one of the ones who, you like, there's life before Rakim and there's life after Rakim. Like, you couldn't go back to just rhyming at the end of the line after mm -hmm. Rakim existed. So I think that's, that's like a really, that's a, that's a good one. <laughs> can I say something? I'm jumping in. Cool Mo D. It's, cool for me, it's D. definitely Cool Mo D. <laughs> that is so cool. Now, this question is uh, for the both of you. Now, Missy, speaking of hip hop, Missy said, um, and I quote, I feel like I've learned more about history in 2020 than ever before. Mm. And um, I feel like a lot of people will agree with that with everything that's, that's going on, especially myself. What would you say to the people, especially with this film focusing on the founding fathers that were essentially slave owners? Right. And people may feel like they don't want to see this film. Not right now, not the time. What would you say to those people to get them to watch this film, just to, to motivate them to go see it? Well, listen, I think um, I didn't care about these people either. Like I was not a history fan prior to reading Hamilton's book. He was, he was all I knew about him was he was the white guy on the 10 and he died in a duel. And then I picked up this history book and my way in was that he grew up in the Caribbean and he came from somewhere else. And that I understood because my dad came from the Caribbean and made a life for himself here. And so that was my way into the story. Um, and I think that if you tell it that way, you see it through a, a, a kind of um, different lens. It's not an accident that we have black and brown bodies playing these founders and I think one, that just came because I wanted to tell this story through hip hop and R&B and I was never picturing the statues. I was never picturing the monuments. I was I was thinking, who's the best R&B artist who could play Aaron Burr? Like I was casting it as an album in my head and I think that freed me up from the iconography that you're seeing get torn down um, as we reckon with what kind of country we want to be going forward. Um, and... Um, to me, the, the way in which we followed that up with the casting is good, bad, or indifferent, we are the inheritors of this country. Mm -hmm. And we get to tell that story too. And we also get to tell the story of who we want to be going forward. Um, so that's, that's the reasoning behind us telling the story because it's going to be our country. We are growing in numbers and we have to reckon with the past, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, and we have to... Uh, decide what we th what kind of country we want to be going forward Ooh. and that's happening now like history is happening now yes yes appreciate that answer thomas take it away well, you know i i grew up in northern virginia right outside of dc and went to school in dc from seventh through twelfth grade and grew up really close to mount vernon where george washington lived and owned slaves and as a kid going there like you're like this young young kid and that was all of our school trips um, and I, I went to school in, in Alexandria for the first uh, sixth grade and something just didn't feel right. Like the, the celebration and the fact that it's this city you know, just over the river was named after someone who, you know, who founded this country and and yet, like, in, you know, didn't fight the original sin. Like, I, you know, the conflict of that. And so for, for Lynn and I, really early on, this was never about, um, this was about interrogating about asking why, about why was something uh, that was so foundational not discussed? Why did it, why was it not discussed then and why are we not talking about it now? And clearly in this moment, you know, where we, we exist, it feels like if this show can give um, energy and momentum to the movement, then the show is, is, is serving the moment. 
and that's all that we can do. It's like, you know, as, as Lynn and I like to say, like nothing in the show lyrically has changed since 2015, but we all have. So what is the thing that resonates within this? What is the line that all of a sudden can, can give voice to what you're feeling? Because it's a show about revolution. And how can we can, how can we can investigate it there and then try to silence it outside of the theater? So our hope is by putting it on Disney Plus, where tens of millions of people can see it in one day, that maybe we're we're doing some kind of service towards that and just trying to participate and contribute. You actually are, because as you see with the Black Lives Matter movement and uh, protesting, you guys are quoted a lot with the um, mm. with the boards and everything. So kudos to you guys for that. Lastly, I have to get this out. Nicki Minaj character, uh, Renee Goldsberry said that when she went for the Angelica Skyler role, that it said <laughs> Nicki Minaj type, and she was a little apprehensive. Actually, she was like, I'm not even going to audition because I don't even fit the bill. Why did you, <laughs> why did you guys categorize that particular character as Nicki Minaj type? And what does that even mean? Well, I wrote those breakdowns. So my right. goal with it was I wanted to have as big a tent in, ter in terms of the casting as possible. I wanted people who had never auditioned for a musical to audition. I wanted musical folks who had never had a, like, who loved hip hop but had never been able to bring that to come in. So every character description was a half a musical theater reference and half a hip hop reference. So I think George Washington was uh, Mufasa meets- uh, John Legend. Yeah. Uh, or John Legend, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, you know, and and Angelica's character was Desiree Armfeld, who's a, like the smartest character in Little Night Music, meets Nicki Minaj because she's just got the fastest raps in the show and the hardest raps in the show. And um, it was it was the intelligence. Um, th that's the secret about Angelica. She's the, she's smarter than Alexander. She's smarter than Jefferson. But because she is a woman in this time, she only gets to exercise it in a few ways. Um, and so, uh, so that was, that was the thinking behind each of the characters. I think, um, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones, like King George was like Rufus Wainwright meets, uh, like King Herod from Jesus Christ Superstar. Uh, I, I can't remember, but, but the fun of it was like this mashup of a musical theater character and a hip hop artist and that, and in the contradiction, f figuring out what actors would do with that. I love it. I'm glad she took the role. She did an amazing job. But that was a great correlation with the, you know, being smarter than the guys. Because as we know, Nicki Minaj got bars and she's clever. And yeah. She's so dope. And she could get on a record and kill most of the guys on there. So I see the correlation. I see what you yes. did here. Great, great. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, you also can see like in our show that like most of the hip hop references in the show end, you know, like in the early 2000s, like <laughs> everything's from the 90s when we were listening to hip hop. You know, it's like, like, well, like you can just see like the, the crystallization. You see our teenagers. Every album. Yeah, you see it's like our teenagers. Like, it's pun, yeah, exactly. it's biggie. It's very East Coast 90s. There's even a little sneaky brand new being in there. Like it's just Ooh. sort of. Well, and Hercules Mulligan, right? Like, like was Busta Rhymes. Like, so when Busta Rhymes wrapped a Hercules Mulligan rap in the mixtape, it was like two things that like, we, it was like a, it was beyond anything you could comprehend. Yeah. I love it. I'm sure I can't wait to see it. And I'm, I'm sure the fans listening to this, especially the hip hop fans, we, we can't wait to see it as well. Congratulations, Thomas, on your wedding and your newborn child with, with Michelle Williams. Congratulations. Happy belated Father's Day to all of you guys. And thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks for talking. Thank talk. you. Nice talking to you.